My name is Lawrence Hill. I'm a writer. I'm really honored to be part of the Fold Kids Book Fest 2022. I want to thank Ardo O'Meara and J.L. Richardson for inviting me. And I'm here today to speak with you a little bit about my latest novel, Beatrice and Croc Herrick. Although um, my other earlier 10 books were written for adults uh, dealing with weighty tomes of identity and Black history and uh, segregation and freedom and the, the search for uh, Blackness and, and uh, the movements of people uh, around the African diaspora over the course of time. Um, I really, in some respects, these continue to be my preoccupations in this book, but I've written a novel for children, and I hope it's also for adults and anybody who's young at heart. Beatrice and Croc Harry is the story of a young girl who awakens in a forest, a magical forest, alone and with her memory completely erased. She has no idea who she is, even what her last name is. She seems to remember that her first name is Beatrice, but that's all she's got. Her age, if she has a family, if she has a mother, what her country might be, what year it is, why she's been kicked out of the human race and left abandoned, completely alone with no other human beings in a massive, inescapably large forest. These are all things that trouble her because she wakes up alone in this forest with no idea who she is or what she's doing there. Now, if I were to wake up alone and abandoned in the forest, I wouldn't mind some food and books. And so I have Beatrice uh, the privilege of waking up in a treehouse stocked with food and books. This is not a starvation story. This is not a story of how am I going to overcome the elements or stay alive. Um, it's a story of the search for Beatrice's identity as a young Black girl, um, as, a, as a person who's been divorced from her past. In many ways, it's a meditation on the, on the after effects, the aftershocks of the transatlantic slave trade when millions upon millions of people were forcibly hauled across the oceans and then forcibly divorced from their history and their culture and their homelands, their religions, uh, their ways of being, even their names were removed from them. And so Beatrice also has, has been forcibly removed for violent reasons that she doesn't quite understand or remember into this place of isolation when she's all alone. And um, I, I decided that she should meet a, a predator who's quite dangerous, that she's gonna have to tame and turn into an ally. And this predator is a 700 pound crocodile named Croc Harry with 69 teeth and a massive carnivorous appetite who would first like to have her for breakfast, but they have to overcome this little hiccup of whether he will or won't have her for breakfast. And once they've uh, uh, agreed to a truce, uh, she won't uh, uh, do anything nasty to him. She's got some tricks up her sleeve and he won't attempt to have her for a meal. They have to form a friendship and together they're going to go on a journey to try to discover they're mutually lost identities because he too has had his memory erased and he too has no idea what he's doing in this forest or why he's there, or what his history is as a crocodile. Um, I have long been interested in issues of black identity and blackness and how one develops a positive sense of identity as a young black person. Growing up in Toronto in the 1960s as a child of an African-American father and a white, American mother, both of whom were civil rights activists uh, throughout their lives. Um, identity, uh, blackness, uh, being black in a place where th that might be somewhat ill-defined or misunderstood are things that have preoccupied me in all of my writings. I seem to keep coming back to them. And here, Beatrice will also awaken, not first even thinking about the fact that she's black and why should she? She's got, she has other things on her mind. Like, is that crocodile gonna kill her? Or is that tarantula gonna sting her or bite her or, or um, make her arm go numb or perhaps die of tarantula toxicity? And so Beatrice has other things on her mind. And as she's trying to figure out who she is and what she's doing in this forest, it begins to dawn on her that she's black. And I give her things to do that, that are markers of identity. For one thing, she's got this wonderful, head of hair, the beautiful black hair, and she doesn't quite know what to do with it. Of course, there are no hair products in this forest. She's all alone. There's some oatmeal and books, but there's nothing to 
to work with in terms of her hair. She has no comb or she has nothing really. And so she's got to learn to play with her hair and she has some missteps. At first she tries to use coconut water. That's useless, that just makes things worse. And she eventually graduates on to finding some um, avocado which she can mash up and that sort of helps her loosen her hair a bit so she can work with it and do fun things with it and move into her identity as she begins to discover her hair. She also has a challenge of dealing with a crocodile who has a massive vocabulary. And because the book is full of weighty issues like identity and a violent past and what it's like to have been removed entirely from one's background and family, home, culture, nation, and to have to find perhaps one's way back to that, I wanted to leaven the book and make it entertaining and uh, interesting for young readers, hopefully for all readers of all ages, by injecting a lot of play. And so there's a lot of language play in this book, words like guzalum and um, crocohypoliterosis and decrocustation, you know, sort of abound on the pages. And there's even a glossary at the back of the book for all these made up words and silly words and highfalutin words that may be real, but are completely ridiculous. If you're wondering, and if your students are wondering, um, decrocustation refers to the process of hurling oneself out of the belly of a crocodile after having been ingested to save one's life in the nick of time. I hope your readers, uh, your students, your children who come into your libraries and your schools love the book. I hope you do too. I had a riot writing it. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Emily Sayo and I am a scientist and author living in Vancouver, BC. My debut novel, The Science of Boys, combines my background in the sciences with my passion for writing for young readers. The Science of Boys is published by Tradewind Books and illustrated by Gracie Zhang. It's a story about a preteen girl, Emma Sakamoto, who wants to reinvent herself at the beginning of high school. So when a popular girl enters the scene and lets it be known that she has a crush on a highly sought after boy, Emma lies and tells her that she's writing a book about the science of boys. The only problem, she knows nothing about boys. So she applies real science concepts to her advice and surprisingly, they work at the beginning. The only problem is because she has a lack of knowledge of this topic, she ends up lying a lot and these lies accumulate and things start to fall apart, which force her to confront her real, the real reasons of why she wants to fit in so much and um, forces her to face the realities and what's going on in her life. So the science of voice contains a science law theory or concept in every chapter which gets interwoven into the storyline so if you like science great uh, there's so many layers and every time you read it you might find something new um, but even if you don't like it or understand it there's a lot of heart in the story and there's some relatable topics like peer pressure body image issues and the effects of technology on young minds So to tell you a little bit more about myself, I um, have a PhD in chemistry from the University of British Columbia. I, after I graduated, I moved to Scotland where I pursued a postdoctoral fellowship. And then after that, I moved to Germany where I worked as a science editor for two chemistry journals before moving back to Vancouver, Canada, where I ran a uh, science facility and um, supervise student projects and helped researchers. So it really the experimentation of uh, my experimentation with writing led to the science of boys. So again, the science of boys is about a girl who struggles to fit in and uses her si science mind to gain popularity. Uh, if you want to learn more about this book, please check out my website www emilyseowrites.com and um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Emily Sale Writes. Hi, my name is Joan Marie Gallot and I'm the author of Mortimer Rat Race to Space. This is my first middle grade novel, but my 24th book, I've written a lot of nonfiction, often with storytelling involved, 
and uh, I like to explore STEM and STEAM topics. So this book is about Mortimer, a lab rat, a journal keeping lab rat who thinks that his species should be the one to colonize Mars. He competes in a race uh, through a maze to get a spot on the International Space Station. Now, he may not win that race, but he does find his way up into space. He has a YouTube channel and he has a camera and he's conducting experiments on the astronauts to prove that his species should be the one to colonize Mars. But things don't go exactly as he planned. He has some problems with his friends along the way. There's some tricky things about living in space and he has to make some big decisions. He has to decide whether he should continue to follow his dream or whether he should make the right decision, do the thing that's right. He starts to really get a little creative with his uh, YouTube videos and he gets called on it. So this is a great book for addressing the topic of misinformation and um, the importance of doing proper research and being careful what sources you use to get information. A teacher's guide is available for Mortimer Rat Race to Space. It includes discussion questions, writing, art, and science activities, as well as an activity sheet that you're welcome to print. I like to visit schools both virtually and in person. I love to travel, so if you invite me, um, I just might show up. One of the things I like to do is show students this model of a SpaceX rocket. It's the same rocket that Mortimer used to travel up to the International Space Station. Five, four, three, two, one. Between sharing my rocket launches and using various props, I make sure that my presentations are lots of fun and with plenty of takeaways for students both in science and in literacy. I want kids to know that there is a special book for every kid in the library and that their job is to find it. Hello, uh, my name is Michelle Kateroosman. I'm a children's author and I'm so excited to uh, be able to talk about my newest middle grade novel called Barani. Now, Barani is set in Indonesia, my father's homeland, and it centers around a captive orangutan. And the book is, is told in three different voices. One is Malia, who is um, a youth activist, and she's very um, set on saving um, the rainforests, and which is the orangutan's habitat. Um, another character is Ginger Juice, the captive orangutan herself. And the third voice is Ari, a young man who is living in the, his uncle's restaurant, and it's this restaurant where Ginger Juice is kept in a cage. Uh, and the two, um, the two young people have to come together to liberate uh, ginger juice. The, the themes are conservation, um, activism, and endangered species. Um, there's also social themes of speaking up, um, speaking up for others, um, doing the right thing. The character Malia is Indonesian Canadian. And uh, so like me, she's come from two different cultures. So there's a little bit um, uh, ex of that character exploring her identity. Um, I wanted to introduce this subject um, because I've grown up with an Indonesian parent and a parent from a Western culture. And I wanted to explore that theme a little bit. Obviously, it's a very personal journey uh, for everybody but that theme is also explored in this book. Um, it's published by Pajama Press and it was out August, 2022. And um, there is a teaching guide available um, on Pajama Press 
www.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca.ca